right. Who is excited about season three? <laughs> Who would stay here if they gave us all 10 episodes tonight? <laughs> There's one person that's like, I'm going to bed. I'm sorry. <laughs> Philippine. Bonjour. Bonsoir. So I took French for seven years, <laughs> and that is all I learned. <laughs> the American education system. That's good enough. C'est bon. Oh, oui, three, bon. three words. Yeah, look at that. Oh, that's good. I know. So tell us the truth. Were those boots made for walking? Um, well. Yes, give it up for the boots. When you work with Darren Starr and Emily in Paris, you do walk in these boots all the time. So yeah, I got, I got the gist of it, but uh, you know. Amazing. Um, when I saw those boots walk in, I was like, oh, I'm not nervous. No one's looking at me. Um, <laughs> okay. So, you know, let's start at the very beginning. Um, how did you decide to get into this business, to become an artist and actress? Oh, my God. That's a long story. Um, my father's an actor. I mean, now he's now 92, so he doesn't, he doesn't act anymore. But my father's an actor, and as a kid, I obviously saw him just leave the house and go do films and things, so... Obviously, when you're a daughter, you want to be with your dad. So I think that's the main reason. <laughs> no, but then, yeah, it kind of grew on me really slowly. And when I was 13, I realized that's exactly what I wanted to do. Um, yeah. Yeah. So was there any actor or actress that inspired you and you said, I want to do that? Mm, no, it wasn't like that. It was really my dad. It was all your dad. Oh, that's bad. <laughs> so, um, you know, I think you had once said in an interview that when you were 15 years old, you decided that is what I want to do. Was that your dad? Was it a movie you saw that inspired no, you? No, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. The, rea the, the truth is that I did see, when I was like 12, 13, I saw a Cabaret with Liza Minnelli. And as a little girl, I was like, wow. That's amazing. You can sing, dance, and act at the same time. I mean, and so I started learning all her songs, and I was singing cabaret in my room all the time. I mean, dressing up like her uh, with a you know boa and 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 high heels, and that was stealing to, from my mother's closet, obviously. And um, and no, I was I was it, I was just going crazy with this. So it, you know, that's how it developed. I mean, I realized I wanted to be in front of people and, and do stupid stuff. <laughs> um, do you think Sylvie will be singing in a future episode? Oh, I hope not. I mean, when you see, <laughs> when you see what Ashley does, it's kind of difficult to... You, you can know. have, like, drunk karaoke. No, I, yeah, I could have a little piano bar moment, I like, uh, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> so, um, you know, in many ways, I think Sylvie is, like, a beacon of confidence. So... How about you? Like, how has your confidence changed from when you first began in this business to this moment right now? Oh my God, it's changed so much. But also, it's 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 time. That's a magic thing. I mean, time gives you confidence. Um, you know who you are much better than when you were younger. So, knowing who you are grounds you, makes you more aware of whatever is going on, you know, your demons and your, you know, your unconscious movements. And so uh, you deal with them much better and um, you get, you, you respect yourself much more. And um, respecting yourself gives you confidence. So yeah, it's time. It's a magic thing. Have you embraced your inner demon? Is, yeah, is I that have. who I'm on stage with right I, now? I keep him on a leash. <laughs> Um, so we're going to talk about Sylvie soon, one of your best roles, I think. But have you ever had an acting role that was not your favorite, that maybe challenged you a bit? Oh, well, yeah, there, ha there have been a few, but you wouldn't know them. I mean, from French movies. But uh, the thing is that, well, Sylvie is really like, uh, it's a huge undertaking because it's, a, it's, a, it's Darren Star because it's a, I mean, the series is is a huge success. So the more we go, the more I feel like there's a huge challenge. And um, so it is difficult in a way to go there. Uh, even though I love her and I think I know her, uh, I'm like, oh my God, the more, the more success, the more you have a pressure. Yeah. So. Well, you also pop up in season five of The Crown. I was yeah, very excited about. 
but it was it was a great moment. Um, and your cast is everywhere. They're in White Lotus. They're in The Crown. They're in Paris. I know. So you know, if Sylvie were in White Lotus, do you think she would be murdered, or would she be the one? <laughs> would she be the one murdering people? Maybe she'd be the one murdering people. One hundred. But she'd get killed at the end. Probably. I think so. I think so. And how about the crown? You know, if Sylvie went over to the crown, do you think, who'd she, who would she be friends with? Ah. Oh. Tea with the queen? Charles? Oh. No, I think Diana. I think so. I think so, because she, she would understand her vulnerability, because that's the thing that I like about Sylvie. You know, she has an armor, but she has a wound, and she understands that. She understands vulnerability, so... So, you know, I think everyone has kind of one big role that maybe slipped away. Um, is there any role that you auditioned for that you want to share with us that maybe didn't work out? I absolutely have no regrets. I mean, everything that happened to me is exactly what had to happen. So, yes, of course, there's films I would have loved to do, but it's so right that it didn't happen that I have no regret. I mean, it's like... Life is perfect. Yeah, I love that answer. And she's like, I'm not telling you. <laughs> no, 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 it's true. It's true. It's true. Um, okay, ready for some Emily in Paris? Should we get okay, into let's, it? Let's, let's go there. Okay, when you first got that script, talk to me about that. What was your reaction? What was the audition process like? Well, the, aud the audition was very simple and very, you know, the, uh, the, the casting director called me and said, okay, we have a part, I have a part to cast, but you're not, you, you're much too old for the role, so, uh, but you should read the sides, because I think you could, I, I think you could read for this. I don't know if you'll get it, because you're obviously, they're casting 35, 40-year-old women, so, and so I got the sides and I started reading the sides, and I said, oh, God, I know this woman so well. And I know her, why? Because my mother used to work in fashion, and as a, a teenager, I've met so many Sylvies. So, and my mother was a bit of Sylvie, too. And um, <laughs> so, so I read, and then for a month and a half, I didn't hear anything from anybody. And I thought, okay, they went for you know a younger actress. And then I got a call back, and I was so surprised. And Darren was in Paris, and that was super, I mean, intimidating. And, um, and what he saw was my vulnerability at that moment. And he told me last year that that's why he chose me, because he saw the vulnerability behind, you know, he didn't want Sylvie to be just a one-sided character. So, um, yeah, and, uh, I was really surprised. But I, I, no, I mean, I have to be honest. No, I was surprised, but not really. I knew that, as I told, as I said before, it was just perfect. It was exactly what had to happen. Was there a line in the pilot script that you were like, I can do this? Or every line, maybe? There's a line that they cut. But uh, I loved it. And where I offer Emily a cigarette and she says, no, I'm not smoking. Smoking can kill you. And Sylvie answers, better dead than fat. <laughs> and obviously it's so politically incorrect that they cut it. But I just loved Sylvie because of that, because of the political incorrectness that she has. That is an amazing line. Thank it's you for doing that for so us. so great. So, you know, what research did you do before you met Darren? Had you watched Sex and the City? I had watched some episodes, but I wasn't, like, watching them all the time. Also because at that time, when it came out, we didn't have a computer, and we couldn't stream. I mean, we couldn't stream and binge watch the whole thing. So I did see some episodes here and there, but I wasn't like, this is my favorite. I'm not going to sit in front of it every night, you know? But I watched it afterwards, and I absolutely adored it. So I know you said your mom was part of your inspiration for Sylvie. Did you channel any other characters for Sylvie's Sylviness? Yes, Betty Davis. I mean, she's an inspiration. I've always loved her, but obviously she's like, I mean, I'm not saying, you know, nothing of her is in me, but I, I was look, you know, watching her and thinking, oh my God, this is a, such a perfect Sylvie. I mean, she's amazing. She has a way of, you know, with her cigarette and, um, especially in All About Eve, she's like, whoa, that violence and that vulnerability, uh, you know, that's exactly what I liked, and that's what I wanted to bring to Sylvie, and before Darren even told me about my vulnerability, but I, that's exactly what I thought, you know, we should bring to a character, 
Um, so Betty Davis like, was definitely somebody I, I was, you know, watching. I've, I've always loved her. Always. I thought you had some like Meryl Streep, Devil Wears Prada vibes, but nicer. Never. I never thought of her because I could never. I mean, if I had thought of her, I would have been like terrified. Yeah. So, no. <laughs> we don't want a scared Sylvie. No. <laughs> All right. So your cast has terrific chemistry. One on one in the group settings are some of my favorite scenes. So I want to talk about the cast a bit. Are you ready? Go ahead. You're going to have to reveal some stuff. Who makes everyone laugh the most on set? Oh, I think now it's Lucia, live as count. Okay. Alfie. Okay. He's just... Who was it before? Um, uh, Bruno, but Bruno and, and Lucien in a different way. You okay. know? Bruno is like an incredible clown. And sometimes we can't even, you know, we can't complete a scene when he's in it because we start laughing like crazy. So, no, he is incredible, but... Not on set, but off. Lucia is like the one who's always like a party goer. Yeah. Um, who knows their lines the best? Oh, Lily, obviously. And me. And you? <laughs> Between you and Lily, who would win? Lily. Okay. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> she didn't mean that. Um. No, 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 it's true. It's true. I mean, she's a super, no, I'm, I'm joking. She's a super professional. Um, who's the most serious member of the cast? I think I am. Really? Yeah, when I'm on set, I'm like, not laughing with anyone. Oh, <laughs> very Sylvie of you. Um, who's always on time? Oh, uh, Lily and me. Okay. We're, the good, we're the good pupils, you yeah, know, we're good it. students. We're always like, who's always ready. not on time? No, I can't say that. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have names, but I can't say. <laughs> um, who would you want to be stuck on an island with? From the cast? Yeah. Oh, definitely Bruno. Really? Oh, yeah. What would you guys do? Would you survive or would you just... Oh, I'm sure we would. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but not because he builds a house or anything. He'd just make me laugh and give me energy to build a house. Okay, so you have you know, to do the building. Yeah, I'd have to do everything. He's there for the comic relief. Right, exactly. <laughs> okay. Um, who would most likely get arrested with you? With me? Yeah. Hmm. Who would I don't mean? think it's Lily. No, no, know. not at all. Um, probably Ashley. Oh. <laughs> um, okay, was there a She's going to hate me for this. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, tomorrow I have to see her. Ooh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't okay. worry. This isn't being live streamed. Um, a scene in which you just couldn't keep it together and who was responsible? Bruno. Every time. All the time. I mean, there's a scene, I can't, I'm going to spoil it, I can't say anything, but there's a scene where we just, I mean, <laughs> you're going to see, at the end of the season, it just, just goes wild. He goes wild. Okay. I mean, he's like, yeah. Um, okay, so I think there are a lot of love triangles in this show. A lot. I think Sylvie has her share of love. It's a geometrical show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's like a quintuple thing. Yeah, it's kind of really So weird. good at geometry, <laughs> quintuple. Um, so you have Sylvie Chaos, you have Emily Chaos, and I want you to give some romantic advice to a few characters here, as Philippine, not as Sylvie. Okay. What would you say to Emily romantically? What's just, advice? Just move on. <laughs> Forever? Be single? From both of them. Just get out of there. Okay. As a mother, I would say, no, get out of there. You know, just get out of there. Just find another nice man. I don't know. And should she stay in Paris or move to a different? No, she should stay in Paris. Okay. Right. She has to work with Sylvie. Okay. Oh, that's true. <laughs> um, Gabriel. Um, well, j just go and do your restaurant in the country and have your children, you know, just or with, with Camille, though. Yeah. You know, don't, don't. Don't leave her. Or do, don't yeah. waffle, man. No, and don't keep going back and forth. Stop being in love with Emily. Oh, it's so annoying, right? Oh my God. <laughs> All right, Alfie. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Come with me. <laughs> <laughs> I was just gonna say, are you Team Gabriel or Alfie? But I guess we know. <laughs> And what would your romantic advice to Sylvie be? Um, hmm. Mm, I'm going to spoil the season if I say Yeah. I can't um, say anything. Hmm. 
All right. I mean, what Darren did in this season, I think, is exactly what Sylvie should do. So okay. I'm not going to, you know. Sorry, guys. You I'm not going to spoil it. I'm sorry. You're going to have to wait a little. Yeah. Um, okay. I think Sylvie is universally loved online. She really is. Oh. According to my deep Twitter search. <laughs> um, so I want to ask you, what is the best online feedback that you have seen? Do you ever, do you ever read the online comments? Not really. That's no. smart. That's the smartest thing you can do. <laughs> no, not really. Um, What's the best feedback you've gotten in real life about Sylvie? Uh, well, um, I guess Darren's uh, trust is something that really, you know, uh, and no, I have to say, I, I, I'm, I'm answering like that because I'm thinking about something my daughter wrote on Instagram and I was like, what? Uh, and she did that without you knowing. Don't, yeah. Don't write that on Instagram, my love, please. Uh, but it was really beautiful, and I was like, uh, you know, it's it's a lot. It was a lot. Yeah. Well, I will tell you, someone on Twitter said, "All I want is Sylvie in Paris. That's all I want." So it's it's really good stuff. Yeah. I was going to ask you if you'd ever seen negative stuff online, but you don't look. And I don't the really best look. Thing. No. Yeah. Um, all right. One of the biggest reactions to the show, especially at the beginning, I think people were really, really loving to hate the show. And that's what a lot of the feedback was. So I wanna ask you, like, do you think that's part of what makes this show so brilliant? Why do people have such a visceral, they either love it or hate it? I think it's because Darren is, is, writes a sort of a fairy tale that has nothing to do with reality yet there's truth to it in the sense that what people, what the characters go through is really, is real. But um, there's no reality in the settings, the costumes and blah, blah, blah. So especially in France, people were like so offended. It was crazy. And I had to tell them, you guys don't have any sense of humor. So they hated it, me even more, which <laughs> didn't make, uh, but, um, and they didn't realize that Darren was also making fun of the Americans through Emily in a way that was that was so you know obvious for me. But I guess the French were offended because they didn't see Paris the way Darren and through Emily's eyes was seeing it. But then now the music has changed. They really love it. They do. They oh, do. Yeah, they do. I think there was a big switch from season one to season two. Yeah, but I think I mean Darren's writing is brilliant because he always takes people. I mean he. He catches your attention with sugar and chocolate, and 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 then slowly he starts. Singing. So it's. Um, I think that's why people at the beginning were like, "Okay, what is this? You know, this is just you know, cute girls with high heels walking around Paris and going ha ah. But um, <laughs> but no, at the end, you know, we've seen that in his writing in many other shows. You know, he's slowly like. Oh, and I hope, I mean, I mean, I'm sure season four is going to be incredible because he's slowly, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I have to say, like, a lot of the tweets are always, oh, I hate this. I love this show. I can't I wait for it to come back. I know. So there is, like, love at the core of it, I feel like. And I was just going to ask you, are French people much more critical of the show? Oh, yeah, they are. Definitely. Yeah. What are yeah. some of the things they've said? That it's not realistic, you know. It's um, why is he mean? We're not like that. We're not. We're not arrogant. I was like, <laughs> and what do you say to that? We have a sense of humor. Yeah, of course you do. <laughs> Whoa, you know. <laughs> I said you don't. That's, what can I say? So, yeah. it, has there ever been a, a like a line in the script that you, as a French person, are like, absolutely not? She would not say that. French people wouldn't do that. Have you changed anything? No. Wow. Mm -mm. Wow, Darren Star nailed it, huh? He did. Okay, this is a good answer. Are you sure? No, I'm Are totally sure. <laughs> no, I'm totally sure because I was really surprised. I mean, sometimes it was a matter of we wouldn't say that like that in the sense we put we wouldn't use these words, but the what he had to convey, the idea he wanted to was always perfect. Okay, Sylvie's confidence. I think you can say it's tied very much to her fashion too, in her fashion choices. Was there an outfit that just made your jaw drop? And can I say something? It's yeah. not fashion, it's costumes. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
That's a Sylvie it's, thing. That's yeah, so Sylvie. Sylvie. Yeah. <laughs> Just got yelled at by Sylvie. No, it's costumes. And we really want it to be costumes because um, we, we it's not about brands giving us clothes and wearing them just to show off with stuff. It's about, you know, it doesn't look like that because it, it is a fairy tale. But yes, there is a whole, you know, reflection behind it on how we're going to, why we're going to dress the character like that. And so. So what costume has she worn that made your jaw drop? Oh. Mm. I think every season it grew from season one, like season one, there's the green dress that I wear at a party, that is a, a, votier, a votier dress with just one shoulder that where I went, oh, that was nice, that was a nice dress. Um, and then uh, Emily wears sometimes, this season, Emily has a dress in a party where I went just, what? Um, yeah, Marilyn Fatusi, who's worked with Patricia Field for the first season, and now she's moving on and she's doing it all by herself, is an incredibly creative and, um, I don't know, crazy person, crazy in costume designer, and she's like, she's very close to the actors. She works a lot with them, and so we go back and forth. Sometimes we get I get images at 5.30 in the morning when I wake up to go for my pickup, and she goes, okay, I saw this and this and that, and then we're texting, like, and I go, oh, God, I have to go down and take a shower and blah, 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 you know, but it's like a lot of, a lot of, we exchange a lot of information all the time, endless fittings, mm -hmm. because we have to find the right mood, I mean, for every scene, and because we we never wear the same costume twice, which is something crazy. So it has to be perfect for that scene, because we can't, it's not, it, it's more like a, the, the costume is more like a metaphor. It's not just clothes. So it has to convey a sort of subliminal message. So yeah, it's, I mean, it's this, very, it's, it's much more interesting than what people think. Yeah, this season, uh, Sylvie wears some great outfits, mm -hmm. I will tell you. At one point, my jaw did drop, and I, I put my glasses on, and I had contacts on already, so I was it's, like, what? It's so, the exhibit thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. yeah. And um, Let's not spoil that. We're not going to spoil it, but have you stolen any of Sylvie's outfits? No. Well, I, 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 it, season two, I stole one or two things. I mean, it was given actually by, by Marilyn. Said, so just take them. But, um, but then they're in my closet, and I'm not wearing them because it's Sylvie. Oh. I can't. It's like it's, it would be like it's something sacred that I can't wear in real life. You can wear it in five years. <clears throat> well, say. I'll tell you. Yeah, okay, but we'll see it. Um, okay, so in many ways, I think Emily and Sylvie are the anchor relationship of this show. Um, at one point, she says to her, your, she, Sylvie says to Emily, your success is my success. So do you think that Sylvie likes Emily? Does she love Emily? Does she tolerate Emily? Mm, I think when... Since the beginning, I always thought that Sylvie saw that Emily was her, was Sylvie younger. She, she recognized some, uh, she recognized the talent, the baldness, the the smartness. The f but she also saw how fast and younger and with a different approach because of technology and blah, blah, blah. So she's really scared of her at the beginning, but now she needs to have her w on, on her team. You know, keep your enemies close. Oh. And <laughs> she doesn't want Emily to work with somebody else. I mean, it would be a catastrophe for her. She, she recognizes her talent, but she's, she's, you know, they told me the moment Sylvie loves Emily, the show's over. It is, it is. So is Sylvie the, the hero of the show, like the well-hidden hero, or is she the villain? Through and through. She's she was a villain and now she's I don't know something else. <laughs> she's like she has so she is a villain right, in a this, way this though season, she is a villain she because she always puts Emily through challenges and challenges and challenges but then this season Emily is just oh, well you saw that you know the first episode she betrays me 
I mean, Emily betrayed everyone. I mean, including herself in that episode. It's horrible. So, so one thing we see this season, this isn't a spoiler, but we do see a lot of Sylvie's weaknesses, mm -hmm. um, which I think is great because you can't just be one note. Vulnerability. Vulnerabilities. She's yelling at me about all my words. Because um, it's not a weakness. <laughs> it's not a, but, but it's vulnerability. And so which part of her vulnerability are you excited to show this season without giving away too much? Uh, um, I think that the, uh, all the challenges she faces this season is are about going back to herself, to her true self, to the her real who she really is or she wants to be. That's why it evolves the way it evolves by the end of the season. And um, but why did I say not weaknesses? Because I think. Being vulnerable and being able to show your vulnerability is a strength. So, you know, so I think she's very strong, but she's she accepts to show her underbelly and to say, okay, this is who I am. Does she have sympathy for Emily, do you think? Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. Okay. And when did that happen? Did that happen in the first season? Do you think we see more of that this No, season? it happened in season two, I think, yeah, yeah, and yeah. She was like, damn it, I like you. Um, okay, uh, one of the best things about Sylvie, in my opinion, is that she flips gender expectations on its head. You know, she is dating people who are younger. It's stuff that we generally see men doing on, on screen. Um, she has a job that she is, um, she'll do whatever she wants. She doesn't apologize for it. Um, so if you had to pick a famous man that you think has that Sylvie is similar to, who would that be? Wow, I never thought of that. That's a horrible question. Uh, I don't know, I never thought of that, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was like, I no, did I'm it. Sorry. She's I'm being proud very Sylvie-ish, I'm being she's very like, Sylvie-ish. No, I don't think, I couldn't, I never thought of her in terms of gender. I think in France we don't have as much, you know, it's not as one or the other, it's more like, she is a person who is, she knows herself more and more and more. So she's, at that age, she doesn't, she doesn't give a damn about what people think of her, you know. She doesn't take any BS. She's like. But she stands alone on screen. There's she, not a lot like Sylvie. No, but she accepts that. There's a moment in one, uh, season three, so I can't talk about it, where she's alone in the street while smoking a cigarette after a big, big failure. I mean, the whole, she's really alone. And Emily sees her, and there's a moment where Emily goes, oh my God. And, but I really love that moment of like the defeated hero or you know, villain or whatever, um, knowing that she's gonna pick herself up the next day and, and fight again. You know, it's, courage is not about winning all the time. It's about losing and, and, and being scared and accepting to, 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 you know, to continue to live. And, and I like that you said there's no man that can match Sylvie. Like, there's no one she's similar <laughs> to. That's amazing. <laughs> um, would you be friends with Sylvie in real life? Oh, yeah, definitely. I would be. I'd be scared of her. Uh, me too. Like a I little am bit, right now. yeah. A little bit. <laughs> I'd fear her a little bit, but I would love to, her to love me. What would be one thing about Sylvie that would annoy you as Sylvie being your friend? What is? Um, yeah, when she, when she, there's moments where she's very, um, very closed up, very tough and with herself and with everybody. And those moments I'd be really annoyed as a friend. And, uh, but I would probably respect that too. Uh, respect her, you know, the need to be, to have that moment of not understanding anything that's happening and, and just everybody go to hell, you know? Uh, that kind of moment that she has that I totally understand in a way, you know, that's... Uh, um, so do you ever find yourself, especially in your career when you were younger, did you ever find yourself having to channel Sylvie vibes? Is there a story you can share with us where you, you really, you know, kind of came into your own or had to put up with a challenge that you're like, oh, that was kind of Sylvie of me. You know what? It ha it's happening more and more now. Ooh. 
since I, I started playing her. I mean, she gave me a lot of strength. I'm learning a lot from her. Um, I think I was more of a victim before I played Sylvie. And being Sylvie on, on screen or having to live with her for four months every year um, is giving me a lot more strength than I had. I mean, at least I'm aware of my strength. I'm aware of my beast that I'm trying to keep on a leech. And, but uh, that demon is, is also a lot of energy. So that energy is really useful. And I'm learning how to live with it. You know, and that's, um, so I think in the past I was, uh, that's why, you know, going back to what I said at the beginning, life is perfect. There's a moment in your life where you're just meeting the characters you need to explore because that's when, you know, they make you grow. Yeah. So, um, you know, I don't think it was that you were a victim. I think your vulnerabilities were just r ruling you. Probably, bit. yeah, yeah, totally. Um, okay, so what do you think is Sylvie's greatest fear? Hmm, being alone. Which is why she has so many partners in life. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, uh, we're going to do a little Q&A, but before we get to that, guys, let's settle a little debate. Is it Emily in Paris or Emily in Paris? Do I have to answer? You have to tell me what you think. And then what do you guys think? Emily in Paris? Emily in, uh, Emily Emily in, in Paris. Paris. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we have our answer now. Um, OK, so let's get to a few of these questions here. Um, Jason would like to know, is it hard to break character and leave work on set when you aren't filming? Oh, it's super hard. Super hard. My friends don't talk to me while I'm shooting Emily. <laughs> they don't want to talk to me. They know that I can be horrible. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, that's just my Sylvie confidence. <laughs> yeah, no I, I, no, I tell them. I say, no, no, I'm shooting. So, guys, in four months, we'll have dinner and everything. <laughs> um, okay. Caitlin says, hi, Philippine. Hi. Uh, what is your favorite thing about working with the cast? Oh, oh, well, it's, oh, they're all, they're, there's so many beautiful people, really, and, uh, and it's, they're, it, it's so diverse, you know, there's people coming from, from the US, France, the UK, and it's great, and I have to mention Kate Walsh, because um, she was definitely my nemesis in this season, and we had I mean, I was so happy not to be the villain because she was the villain for three episodes. <laughs> and um, no, it was, it was fantastic. We had so much fun. And uh, Kate is so talented. And she, when I look at her, I'm like, oh my God, I'm, I'm, I'm so plain as an actress. She's so talented. And she's like, oh. and um, yeah, so it's, it's great because you meet all sorts of actors that are so different. They all come from different backgrounds. They all have... So it's, it's, it's great, it's beautiful. So this was a two-parter. Caitlin wants to also know, what was your favorite moment filming this episode, the pilot? I mean, not the pilot. Oh, the, the Eiffel Air. Tower. The Eiffel Tower had very little time to film, especially uh, the dream scene at the beginning. And um, we had like in three hours, we had to do everything that's out on the platform. So it was like, it was like a sprint. It was, it was, like, it was so exciting. Because, uh, and it was super cold. It was, now that was a really, I like stunts a little bit. So, uh, <laughs> like when it's, I like challenges and I like stunts. And it was like super exciting. Yeah, that was a really exciting moment and an incredible place to film. So, so you pushed her off the Eiffel Tower? Yeah, I did. Okay, that's what I thought. Um, okay, this person should be a doctor. Great handwriting. Uh, Sylvie is a groundbreaking character. Strong, sexy, unapologetic. Did you realize that from the start or did you bring it to the role oh my god uh good question yeah it's kind of embarrassing no i i uh, i don't know um <laughs> no I, I i really don't know i mean i've been told this lately but i'm like oh 
So somebody said to the, today, you're sexy and sexual. And I was like, ooh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's um, but uh, yeah, I guess, uh, I don't know. I guess it's my Italian side. What did you side. give to Sylvie? What is one thing that Sylvie didn't have before you? My Italian side, which is like more, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's bad. Um, okay, Moira wants to know, is Sylvie meant to be very spontaneous or strategic? Both. Both. Interesting. Yeah. There's moments where she just reacts with her guts, and there's moments where she's super strategic. And that's why what I like about the character is she's very complex, super complex, and she has paradoxes, which uh, I love that. Yeah. Um, I did see one question online. Someone wanted to know, what book are you reading right now? Oh, nothing right now. <laughs> I'm like, here I'm and I don't have time to read. What was the last book you read? <laughs> um, the last book I read, my God. Um, it's hard to say because I was actually not reading for like three months, so I'm forgetting. I'm sorry. I usually read, but you know, um, no. She's like, catching no. me off guard. Yeah. I like. <laughs> it's like, what restaurant do you like? And know, I'm like, basically a book recommendation is what they wanted. For yeah, me. but I'm sorry. Um, so guys, uh, Philippine, thank you so much. I just want to say one of the best parts of the holidays, I think, is that we get new Emily in Paris episodes. It's my favorite part. And I will reveal that there is someone in my family one year ago ran around the house in a Snuggie singing Emily and P, Emily and P, right before we started binging it. So that is the joy that this show brings to people. Oh, that's so And he's nice. going to hate me for revealing that. But um, Philippine, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.